Hi everybody, this is Lamkin, and today's video is going to be a bit of a lengthy one, but it's going to be a very, very important one, probably one of the most important videos I've made on Tekken today. Uh, today we're going to talk about Pavlov's uh, principle, uh, otherwise known as classic conditioning. We're going to be talking about mind games in Tekken, and specifically I'm going to be talking about Okiseme. Uh, appliance and okiseme is a Japanese term it means basically waking attack and it is uh, one of the most fundamental mind games uh, across fighting games and it has to do with applying psychological mix-up uh, when knocking someone down or getting knocked down um, so we're gonna get into all of that today I'm gonna be having some timestamps in, in the comment section on a, uh, yeah in the comment section and in the uh, uh, at the bottom like scroller of the video so you can go there if uh, if you want to jump uh, back and forward I'm going to be first doing a little introduction uh, speaking as to why this is so important and uh, explaining it a little bit in detail uh, then I'm going to show you some uh, setups and then uh, after, the, after that uh, we're going to take all of this theory and we're going to take it into the wild like into the nature and see some real matches we're going to anal analyze some of my matches from today uh, well I will show you to uh, how I apply these uh, uh, special mind games and yeah, basically what I'll, I'm going to explain what are my thought process as this is happening. Um, so you might first of all be thinking like what does a 18th century Russian scientist has to do with Tekken? Well basically uh, in the late 18th century there was a Russian scientist uh, named Pavlov. I don't remember exactly how it went but uh, the story goes that Pavlov here uh, had this uh, experiment experiment that he did on his dog, uh, where he every time he would feed the dog, he would ring a bell, right? And he would do this continuously every day uh, for days and days and days and weeks and months. And uh, uh, at some point, uh, he could ring the bell and the dog would start uh, salivating, right? Uh, the mouth would start running. This is what we call classical conditioning. You do something over and over and over again, and the subject will start to expect uh, this uh, behavior or connect certain uh, things with this behavior that are happening. So in this uh, case, it was the ringing of the bell that the start the dog started to connect this with the uh, the event uh, of uh, food being given to it, right? And we use the same uh, principles in Tekken, actually, whether you are aware of it or not. If you, for example, do on uh, on on round start you do like down back three uh, on round start round one so round two you do the same thing round three you do the same thing like eventually your opponent is gonna start uh, noticing it and then they're gonna start suspecting that okay round start he's gonna do bound down back three and then they might try and low parry you or hop kick you or something like that right that is basically the same principle applied in Tekken and today I'm gonna show you uh, regarding Okiseme how we apply psycholo psychological mix-up uh, on our opponents, right? And how we are, uh, we can use this to our advantage when we are uh, getting uh, the ones getting conditioned by our opponent, right? So, a very, very important and integral uh, part of Tekken uh, is 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 in this area, the mind game area, the psychological area. Once you get past a certain uh, skill level, like I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I'm hesitant to to like uh, give an exact rank but once you get like at a specific skill level it's not so much about execution anymore or character uh, like uh, knowledge matchup knowledge and all that stuff it is also that of course but a big 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 part of it in high level play is all about psychological mix-ups uh, and mind games so um, yeah let's uh, jump right into it okay so today we're gonna be looking at law specifically and we're going to be focusing on Oki situations or Oki semi situations. So, the some of the most crucial Oki tools you'll have with Law is this uh, one plus two nunchuck because it hits grounded, and that's what basically creates your Oki situations in a lot of uh, scenarios, right? The one plus two nunchuck. You got the dragon hammer forward one plus two, this to apply pressure, and you got the the slide. Slide is also very cu crucial in this game, and it, you will use it to create a lot of Oki situations. Okay, so lo let's look at some uh, different uh, Oki options here with the with the slide, uh, the, the slide setup. Okay, first of all, you're gonna have to observe your opponent. What what are they gonna uh, gonna do? Uh, first of all, you need to know that this is guaranteed. If you don't know this already, or if you're having troubles with this, 
go watch my other videos. I have a playlist uh, showing how to, how to apply this, uh, this setup in particular. Uh, but once once we do this, this is an okay situation right here. There's a bunch of different options our, our opponent can make after uh, getting uh, knocked uh, down here. But what I can do is after I've hit them, you see how I flip them uh, on the ground now they're like uh, face down on the ground. I can run up. I can uh, I can hit them again. Right. You see. Because he's, he's he's waking up backwards here. What he, what he can do in this situation is he could uh, let me see. Uh, the only things he can do to avoid my follow-up attack, if I want to dash in and do a nunchuck uh, in my Oki here, he can side roll left. This will uh, avoid the 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 situation. Side roll right won't. He, he will still get hit. And I can keep uh, I can keep looping this uh, Oki situation right here. See, that won't work. But he can side roll left, and he can uh, tech roll. Either left or right, it doesn't matter. If he tech tech rolls, he will avoid my uh, my nunchuck here. You see, works on the right side as well. There you go. Um, oh yeah, also good to note here, if he does a mid kick, low kick, recovery kick, or a spring attack, any of the above, uh, he will get launched by this. You see? Uh, so it's a, it's a really strong, uh, it's a really strong Oki tool, this uh, one plus two here. So this, this is what, uh, what you're going to be looking for is basically how how do they wake up after after this uh, setup right here? How do they wake up? Do they wake up backwards? Do they stay on the ground and roll left? Or do they roll right? Do they uh, do a get up kick? What do they do? You're going to have to observe what they're doing, and uh, depending on what they do, there's a bunch of a bunch of different things that you can do. Now, for people who uh, let's see, if they stand straight up. You can go and you can hit hit them if you're fast enough. See, you do like this, right? And then you reset the Oki situation for as many times as as they do that. And if they the same thing if they wake up backwards, I just showed you already. Reset the situation like that with the nunchuck. If they do the front roll, obviously I don't know I don't know if I even need to show this. This is a uh, <laughs> same thing, of course. Uh, and then I showed you that side roll left will uh, avoid the nunchuck, side roll right won't. You can keep see resetting the Oki situation. And you know already that for wake up kicks, uh, mid, low, recovery kicks, spring attacks, all of this uh, you will get a launch if they, uh, like a counter hit launch if they try to do anything. Um, so yeah, uh, then they have uh, another couple uh, options here. Back roll, uh, let's see. It won't work because they're face down. A uh, quick recovery, and it won't work. You can reset it. And side uh, Yukemi, which is the tech rolls, basically, as I showed you, it works to either side. They they will avoid it. So only thing they can do in this situation is they can tech roll to either side, or they can side roll left while face down on the ground. That is the only three options they have. Uh, so. You, you have to notice, once you do a slide into nunchuck, you have to notice, okay, what do they do? Do they tech roll or do they stay on the ground? Do they do one of those uh, last three options or do they do one of the other options? If, if the answer is, do they do like one of the other like a million options, you just run up and you nunchuck them and you reset the Oki situation. But if they tech roll or side roll left, like this, you, you, you can now apply pressure. And you might do this in a couple of different ways. You might, uh, oh, excuse me. You might run up and you do a uh, dragon hammer, right, to 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 keep uh, frame advantage and to keep your turn. And now you're free to apply pressure. So you you'll have to notice the first time you can, okay, what do they do? What what can I do next next time you knock them down? You know, okay, I can run up and nunchuck them, or I have to run up and apply pressure. You can also. Uh, 
run up and do like a, a grab mix up. Or you can uh, just set up another slide, right? Like that, right? Or if you're really sneaky, you can do something like this. And then reset the situation with a slide. Gain frame advantage here, hold down to enter crouch. If you want to know how to do this, watch my setups uh, tutorial. Right. So you see, there's a. This is a very, very strong uh, mind games right here. I'm gonna show you in some of the the real life uh, matches uh, later in the video uh, how, how how I actually apply this in a in a real match. Um, so yeah, th this is the this is the basics of it. Now you know which kind of options you have, uh, which is uh, very important. All right, let's uh, let's move on. All right, so let's briefly talk about wall uh, okiseme. So what I talked about before, basically it all applies here at the wall as well, except here you're going to be, with Law specifically, you're going you're to be using forward 1 plus 2 or his dragon hammer to create Oki, Oki semi situations, or you could do stuff like uh, of uh, 3 plus 4. So uh, let me demonstrate by way of example here. So normally a staple combo of uh, wall uh, combo for Law would be something like this, right? Oh, let me see. Boom, 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 boom. Something like that, right? So you could do what you could do here in if you wanted to up for more damage but do something that's not necessarily guaranteed is you could instead finish this combo with the dragon hammer boom like that you see how that flips him on the ground face down now you created a oki semi situation and basically what i showed you before it all applies here now you see That's if he stays on the ground here. You just just keep flipping him over, right? If he stands up, or if he does like a backwards Yukemi, which is a back quick roll or something like that. Oh, let me see. He will finish in a up standing position like this, right? And now your just uh, just your, your, your setup will uh, fail. He will be able to block this right here. So what you do instead in this uh, situation, you, think you can do something like this. If you anticipate him, uh, if you anticipate him doing it backwards, you can me. You can do something like this. Let me see. You see. Oh, you could. Uh, Slide, mix up like this again. You see? Now we got him flipped over on his back. Or if, if you think that he's anticipating the slide right here, you could do a, a, sl a slide mix up. Like this. And then reset it, you see? That's how a wall uh, you can send me works basically. Oh, yeah, by the way, you could also do something like. He doesn't backwards, you can me. You do something like this. Now oh, he's blocking right. So if he would, uh, if he was to do a wake up kick, you'd get a launch. If he uh, doesn't, it's basically in this situation, if he does anything but stand up, you, you will uh, flip him over again. So yeah, that's basically how uh, Yukemi works at the wall. The, or at least the, basic, the basics of it. Uh, this is with law, of course. It works with any characters. You just have to find like your stuff. What do, what do you have? Like for Cassia, for example, it would be something like uh, Hell Sweep, uh, for, for free mix up, something like that, right? Uh, so it, it uh, uh, while standing one plus two, it will depend on your character, right? Your mileage may vary, but this is basically how it works at the wall. So yeah, let's uh, move on briefly. Okay, so now that we have uh, looked at some of the basic stuff and gone through some of the different Okisemi options and stuff, let's uh, go ahead and analyze a couple matches uh, that I did today. So I'm in Share Factory right now. We're going to go through some uh, different stuff because uh, even though it all might look easy on paper, we all know that Tekken isn't played on paper. So let, let's see at some. Uh, let's take a look at some of these mind games applied 
in 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 uh, in real life situations right here. All right, so see, uh, we got this first match coming up with the we got some uh, Nina player right here, and straight up I just go into uh, recovery and crouch into a slide mix up. Boom. Flip her over. This is the important part right here. We have created a Oki situation. So I'm gonna observe what she does. I'm gonna take a guess first of all. I've never played this guy before by the way. So I have no idea what he's gonna do here. What, his, what are his uh, tendencies? What does he like to do? This is also uh, new information for me. So I have to be observant. I have to look and analyze what he's doing and remember it. And uh, use that information against him. And at the same time I have to remember that he's doing the exact same thing to me. Like this is a two way thing right. T uh, t Tekken is not uh, uh, PvE. We have to remember that this is another uh, person we're playing with right here and as much as you're analyzing and observing him he's probably doing the same thing to you so you have to like preemptively also structure your behavior around that and adjust along the way but we'll take a look at it. So I flip him over here and uh, we'll see I run up and I do the nunchuck expecting him to stay on the ground but he but he uh, he ends up tech rolling right here. He tech, roll, he tech rolls so he blocks my nunchuck. Now I'm at a fairly safe range here. I'm pretty much at tip, tip range, so that's pretty safe. But what's what's important here is not whether I was successful or not. It is actually just collecting the data, right? So I saw that he likes to tech roll after getting uh, knocked over uh, on his uh, on his back in the uh, Oki situation like that. So I'm gonna take that information and hopefully use it against him at a later point in this match. Alright, so let's see next round here. He knocks me down. This is actually another Oki situation for him. So let's see how I respond to this. It could be interesting watching those. This is going to be a little bit Nina specific, but we'll take a look at it anyway. So he's going to do like forward, forward, four, which hits grounded with Nina. It's a really good uh, Oki tool. Uh, and I choose to do a uh, spring kick here. So I'm obviously going to be hit. Uh, the best thing I could have done in this situation is to just press up, just stand up. Uh, but he knocks me over, and now he gets to uh, do a mix-up or run up and apply pressure, whatever he wants to do, right? And I have to take a guess. I'm guessing that he's probably going to run up and uh, try to pressure me, which uh, he does, as you can see. So I just patiently stay on the ground. And this kind of spooks him, so he backs off a little bit. He's going to wait for me to stand up until he can apply his pressure. He's not planning on doing a low attack or a sweep or anything like that. So I just wait, and you can see as soon as I try to stay up, He's, he tries running in, but that's when I figured I can just beat him if I stand up into crouch and do an instant slide. So now it's my turn to apply uh, the, the mix-up here. I flip him over again, and now we're in a similar situation to as before, right? But now I have the knowledge that he's probably going to tech roll after I flipped him over. So I'm not going to run up and do a nunchuck attack again. Instead, I'm going to run up and I'm going to apply the mix-up. So I choose to just reset this by doing the slide. And now we're in the same situation again, and I figured he's probably gonna tech roll another time. And you can see he does, he instantly tech rolls, and now I can run up and do a 50-50, or something like that, right? Uh, all the options I showed you earlier in, in this video, and this time I choose to do the grab, and it is uh, successful. So that's the mind games applied. Let's take a look at uh, another example here. We got a June player here. Flip him over, let's see what he likes to do. I'm gonna uh, run up and do a dragon hammer because I expect him to stand up. But he actually he actually uh, side rolls left, so I whiff. We get a little combo here. Now this is another interesting uh, situation. Instead of ending my combo here with the traditional combo ender, I actually opt for a Oki set, uh, setup. I do the dragon hammer, expecting him to do a backwards Yukemi, which he does, uh, putting him in a st uh, upright position, which allows me to just slide and reset this uh, situation here. Boom, I can run up. And now I choose to run up and do the nunchuck another time uh, to see if he's gonna side roll again. And he does, but this time he side rolls to the wrong side, leading uh, him to get hit. And I try to do it again. This time he goes backwards, uh, wake up backwards, and it would have hit him. I was just a little bit too slow with the dash here, so I whiff, unfortunately. Um, so we've seen like three different options. First time he side roll left, then he side roll right, and now he just wakes up backwards. So I'm suspecting at this point he's probably just doing random get-ups. He's not really analyzing the situation yet. So that's why I'm just gonna com I feel comfortable comfortable just running up and doing nunchuck. And that's what uh, why it works again. You see in the second round here. Flip him over, run up, do it again. I whiff him. But now at this point, I'm 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 uh, beginning to suspect that he's probably I, don't, I have no idea why that whiffed. By the way, I feel like that shouldn't have whiffed. But at this point, I'm suspecting that that he's he's probably catching on to the fact that I like to run up and do the nunchuck follow up, um, 
after I knocked him him over. Which is why in this final round, when everything is on the line, I suspect that he's he's probably finally gonna tech roll now, uh, having having witnessed that I like to flip him over like that. And that's why in the final round, uh, when everything is on the line, he actually does tech roll, and then I get to run up and do my 50-50, and I choose to grab this time, uh, and it uh, happens to work out, so I get the round. All right, next one. Let's look at this. This is a Yoshimitsu, and I just straight up go into slide like instantly. Now what happened here? Let's see. Flip him over. Now I run up and I expect him to stand up, but he decides rolls left this time. My dragon hammer clips him. I get him again. So now I have this. Uh, I have a feeling that he's probably going to stay on the ground. He already showed me that he likes uh, staying on the ground, rolling on the ground. So I'm going to test his uh, resolve right here. I'm going to flip him over. I'm going to run up and nunchuck him. And I'm going to actually do it again like a third time. And I flip him over like two times in a row, showing him that you cannot stay on the ground, or otherwise I'm just gonna run up and nunchuck you. So this third time, I'm I'm suspecting that he's catching on to this, like reading what he's reading, right? Uh, again, you have to remember that he's also analyzing you as you are playing and, and trying to adjust to your playstyle. So you have to always preemptively. Uh, like try to read what he's reading, if, if that makes any sense, right? So I'm not gonna suspect that he's gonna keep falling for this. So I'm, I'm after the, having flipped him over uh, two times, I'm just gonna run up and reset the situation now. And now after flipping him over one time, I suspect that he's gonna tech roll finally, and that's exactly what he does right here. So I get to run up and do a 50/50. I choose to grab, but he was, uh, as you can see, he was expecting a low or something. He tried, looked like he tried to low parry or something. He was like twitching. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look at that sequence again. Boom, flip him over. Found out that he likes to stay on the ground. Okay, I'm gonna use that information to just force him in, into tech rolling. And then once he starts tech rolling, I can just uh, uh, apply my mix-ups. All right, let's uh, look at the next round here. Boom. Now I have always this is Pavlov's principle, right? Uh, the classical conditioning. So I've already shown him what's going to happen if you stay on the ground. Like, you cannot stay on the ground, otherwise I'm, go I'm going to continue to uh, reset you with the nunchuck. Um, so so now, that, now I'm beginning to suspect that he is starting to associate uh, being uh, flipped over on the ground with, oh shit, I have to... Uh, I have to tech roll, otherwise I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get messed up here, right? And that's why when he starts tech rolling, I just get to run up and apply my mix up for free, right? Now I get to run up and do a, uh, a dragon hammer, right? Alright, let's uh, let's look at this uh, this next fight here. Shout out to Spag. I ran into Spaghetti Rip, <laughs> uh, trying to record uh, some footage for this. So this is kind of a spe special situation because bears, they, they have like a, a very large hitbox in the front, uh, meaning that you, you, you can only, you only have to do like a micro dash in order to, to hit them with the, um, with the next nunchuck attack here. And bear players, they, all, they usually like to stay on the ground uh, you, uh, anyways, and then do like the, the one where they, they throw their hands or like their paws, whatever you want to call it, uh, forwards and uh, knock you down. It's like a typical, uh, like very obnoxious uh, bear gimmick, uh, but this actually gives you a counter hit launcher if you hit them with the the nunchuck. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see what happens here. Flip them over, run up, and I actually get the launch. Now I mess up the combo here, so I'm just gonna reset it again. Boom, flip him over. Now I'm not gonna suspect that Spag is gonna keep falling for it like three times in a row. So I just do it like twice. And then try and reset the situation. Now this is kind of unfortunate because the bears have very like, they have a very arched uh, over like hurt box where their legs are kind of like tucked behind them, so it, it can be hard hitting them with slides sometimes. So like, uh, 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 like forward uh, two plus three grabs and stuff like that. So uh, unfortunately, I whiff him here. He just kind of like uh, uh, whiffs an attack, and I get to I get to reset it another time here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically mind games uh, applied in a in real fight. Now we looked at uh, some Okisemi situations, uh, but uh, I have to stress again, this this applies to everything in Tekken, basically. It's not only Okisemi, it will also apply to grab mix-ups, uh, ground mix-ups, 50-50s, um, every, everything basically. You have, you have to read what your opponent is doing and, and adjust accordingly, and you have to uh, also 
be aware of how you are playing and how you are probably being perceived by your opponents and how they are trying to adjust to you. So keeping all of that in mind, right? All right, now I just wanted to end this video by once again saying thank you all uh, for the love and support you've been showing my uh, my channel recently. I really appreciate it. If you have any like video suggestions that you might want to see uh, stuff that I haven't done yet, I guess let me know in the comment section. Um, this video today that I made is I only made this because uh, a lot of you were asking for this uh, in previous videos and on live streams and stuff. So that's why you're getting this uh, this video today. This is this one goes out to all of you. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you found this video useful uh, and inform informative. Uh, I hope it will help you improve your gameplay long term. So yeah, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, thanks again and I uh, hope you have a good one.